it's another day. And I'm here at Maggoty Wood in Goresworth. Uh, Goresworth is the place where I live. Uh, and I've talked about it before. Maggoty Wood is famous because this is where um, the last paid jester in England is laid to rest. And that's where he is. And this is a beautiful wood, it's really nice. Legend has it. Oh, white feather. I'll take that, but if you want it, you can have it as well. Legend has it that when he was on his deathbed at Causeworth Hall, which is where he was employed, his last wish was to fire an arrow from the bedroom window. And wherever that arrow lay, that would be his final resting place. Now the hall is that way. Probably about a mile that way. So it's not a bad bad last throw of an arrow, is it? For somebody who's on the deathbed. Um, but archery is one of one of the ancient British skills that we we were pretty good at. As the French uh, French people at Agincourt would testify. So how well do we know our history? It's coming up at the moment. It, it, you know, I'm not, not going to get into it, um, political events and um, social events. Um, but the subject of history is coming up a lot. And I used to hate it at school. And I used to hate it because it was done in such a, um, a school way. You know, like a lot of subjects. Geography was another one I used to hate it. Uh, we learnt all about the agricultural revolution, uh, the industrial revolution, all the things that mattered, apparently. You know, we, we learnt little bits about the Second World War, about the Nazi concentration camps. Um, but it was done in a way where it was exams. So we were studying for exams. That's never a good way of learning things, is it really? So I used to hate it. And when I went to a careers meeting uh, with one of my teachers, we went and you had to look at what qualifications you needed to do specific jobs. And one of them was politician. And I remember distinctly, it said, you need a history O level. And I come for the life of me work out why you would need a history O level to be a politician. Um, but of course, the, the reason is because if you look back in history, lessons are repeated over and over again so if you don't learn the lessons from history um, then you're going to make them and we've been doing that for centuries now for decades um, and there's also the other view that if you are a politician and you can um, fall back on your history knowledge then you can use that knowledge to further your own political ideas and agendas because you know it works, because you've seen it in history. Since I left school and since I um, became an adult, which is quite a while now, I, I've loved history. I love looking back at history and um, things that happened. Um, but what we, what we fall into the trap of is looking back at history and looking at dates and events. And we rarely get into the emotions of the situation. Um, we, we become empathic observers, but we weren't there, so we don't know. We know what's recorded, and of course the version that's recorded is recorded by um, an opinion of somebody who was there. And that's not to say that opinion is wrong, but that opinion could be recorded by usually the victor. So usually the winners, they're the ones who write the history books. So we won a famous battle. We'll write the story about our great and wonderful land. And of course, the, the idea of Great Britain um, comes from the idea that we used to win a lot of things. So we used to win a lot of wars, win a lot of battles, invade a lot of countries. We were always winning. So we are Great Britain. But if you look at the emotions, the emotions of, from... Um, whoever is writing their version of events at the time and sometimes the losers I've got far bigger stories 
far more important stories. And especially the way that social and economic history then looks forward and moves forward. You can start to understand why we're in um, situations that we're in and why the world is, is like it is. And I don't mean in, in chaos because of what we're going through at the moment, but you understand why 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 there's a certain leaning towards certain things in certain places in the world uh, because history has moved it that way. There's something that's quite often said which is don't look back. You're not going back, you're moving forwards. So look forwards. Um, and I, I have a bit of a, an issue with that. Because if you don't look back, how do you know where you've come from? So by looking back, you can see what events, what feelings, what emotions um, took place to get to the place we are at this moment in time. And we should live in the moment. So if we're living in the moment, then we should appreciate what has brought us to this moment. Because if we want to move forward, it's important to understand what got us to this place, where we are now, and where we want to move forward to. And by understanding that, we can have a better better way of thinking about how we won't repeat the mistakes that we made. And how we can move forward and, and, and challenge some of the thoughts and opinions that were from before that are not valid any, they're, they're not validated anymore. They're not they're not real anymore and from a bygone era and of course that's what we're finding now is a lot of challenge we are in a, a, a global awakening so many awakenings going on you know it's easy to say a global awakening but there's so many things that are being challenged about society and about the human race and the way we treat the earth but we can only understand uh, where we've gone wrong if we look back in history and 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 say, where did that go wrong? Where did it go right? You know, what, what, what was a good thing? Because at the time it's happening, we don't know it's a good thing. And this time that we're in now, we don't know whether this is going to be for the benefit of the human race or whether it's going to destroy it. We really are at a tipping point. Only time will tell. So when our children of the future are sat down in their uh, classrooms, Whatever classroom that is, because we, there's no guarantee that our education system is going to be the same. You know, and I personally would like to see it change so that we're taught things um, more about um, humane things rather than facts and figures and then asked to regurgitate them on a the page. But in time, people will look back at this part in life as a history lesson. And will they look back and say, we had the chance to change things for the better. We had the chance to completely revolutionise the way we, we thought and the way we looked and the way we, um, where we acted in, in society. Or did we blow it? And did we make the same mistakes that we've been making for the last decades, centuries, whatever, because we just didn't learn the lessons from history. We didn't recognise that we were going through the same period as something else when it went badly wrong so that's the awakening you know living in the now realizing it now but realizing why we've got to this stage how we've got to this stage understanding how we got to this stage and then turning that into something that in the future we can look back on and say how awakened were those people to actually realize that this was the opportunity that they've been waiting for for a long long time We never know. Most of us won't be able to see that. But we'll, we'll be looking from a higher plane. We'll be looking down. And we'll be... Uh, maybe we'll all be helping from a higher plane. It'll still be going on. But yeah, history. Love it or hate it. I love it now. Hated it when I was a kid. <laughs>